Dear Diary, over the past couple days, I've been experimenting with what I figured would be a relatively mid-tier Falconer build. And it turned out that it's a relatively mid-tier Falconer build. However, I do think that this build is very worthwhile to share with you, my dear diary, because I think there's some interesting things that we can talk about here with regards to the pillars of Rogue, what things seem to be strong, what things to be, seem to be commonalities among the best Rogue builds that are currently in the game, things that people are gravitating toward, and maybe some things that are strangely busted <laughs> that kind of get in the way of other builds having time to shine as well. So the character that we ended up experimenting with, I wanted to try something with the spear nodes in Falconer that used increased melee range with puncture while you were using a spear. And I wanted to combine those with puncture with Sirpin's Fractal Tree. Sirpin's Fractal Tree is a unique item with a weirdly low level requirement. You can basically equip this thing during the campaign. It's pretty strong. It has a ton of damage on it and it drops from the exiled mage. So you can find one of these with one or maybe even some two LP if you're lucky. If you're in Merchant's Guild, you can always buy this, of course, but mm, I'm COF, so I have to get lucky for this. So Supreme's Fractal Tree has a good base type regarding spears. Spears are the brunt of lots of jokes in Last Epoch because they don't do much and they don't really have support in any particular um, skills or masteries. So I don't think any of that's changed. I don't feel as though the two-handed spear nodes in Falconer have really moved the needle at all. But for a moment here, let's talk about a trident relative to other things that you could be using in Last Epoch instead. A trident is probably the best base type that you'd be using if you're using a spear. It has a good amount of flat damage and a ton of melee critical strike multiplier. The equivalent to this on a different base type would be an Odachi. An Odachi is a two-handed sword that has a little bit less melee damage, a little bit less melee crit multi, but it has a little bit higher base attack speed. On top of that, it's also a sword, and swords have significantly more support across Last Epoch than spears do. So if that changes at any point, I would expect tridents to be sought after, and I would expect Seerpin's Fractal Tree to be an item that many more people are excited about using, instead of basically being a meme like we're using here. So we are ignoring the javelin text, ignore that for a moment, but at max roll for the physical penetration and the melee flat damage, and even the dexterity that rolls on this item, if you compare this to tier 7 modifiers that otherwise roll in an item, this is the, uh, it's like, it's basically the implicit is tier 7 crit multi. The physical penetration is basically tier 7 physical penetration. The max roll, or like the high rolls of the melee physical damage are tier 7. The max rolls of the dexterity are equivalent to tier 7 dexterity, or sort of tier 7 all attributes that you can get on a two-handed weapon. What I'm trying to say to you is that this is truly, uh, potentially a very, very strong item. It's got a lot of text on it. It's got a lot of damage on it. So it lacks the attack speed, but we get to make up for that by scaling throwing attack speed instead, because of course we're playing a net throwing puncture build. So that is basically what we're doing here. We're trying to get as uh, a good amount of throwing attack speed. We have a couple cute things going on with Falconer as well, but you do have to understand going into this that one of my goals for this character was to explore what it meant to be a Falconer if you weren't scaling Falcon damage. So that brings me to one of the very first things that I wanted to talk about here, other than the fact that this spear is very strong, but still a meme because spears aren't supported in Last Epoch. And that is what it means to be a rogue right now. So recently I did a YouTube video talking about uh, the builds that people were using on the ladder one month after 1.0. You can take a look at the description of this video and I'll provide a link to that as well if you want to go see 29 sweet builds that people are using to push up in the ladder, in the arena of course. So, what does it mean to be a rogue? Basically, in my opinion, it's one of three things. There are three pillars, in my understanding, of mechanics or scaling or skills that people are using to make the most out of the rogue mastery. One is the falcon. Falcon slash falconer. Uh, if you're scaling the minion damage, if you're scaling dive bomb, if you're scaling the bird, the bird deals a ton of damage. And that is one of the strongest things that you can be doing as a rogue. Another extremely strong thing is I would call it Umbral Blades, with a parentheses, 90% of that is Shadow Daggers. So there are builds out there using Umbral Blades that look very good that aren't using Shadow Daggers, 
but the vast majority of them are using Shatter Daggers. For those of you who have been around Last Epoch for a while, you'll remember that uh, Shatter Daggers got nerfed, and then they got nerfed, and then they got nerfed, and then the application rate got nerfed, and then they nerfed around them. And then they introduced Umbral Blades to the game, and Umbral Blades apply Shatter Daggers on hits while they're spinning on the ground, which is just basically undoes all of the nerfs that EHG has ever done for Shatter Daggers. What I'm trying to say is that the fact that Shadow Daggers can be applied by spinning Umber Blades is very strange, <laughs> given uh, the nerf history of Shadow Daggers. Uh, EHG has said in the past that Shadow Daggers are something that they imagine to be a tangent to your build, something that's a little bit of extra on top, and not necessarily something that you specifically build around. In an ethical sense, if you want to think about unethical and unethical, or sorry, ethical and unethical builds, it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek way of describing builds in, our, in action RPGs, my build here is basically an ethical Shadow Dagger build, or maybe a legally distinct Umbral Blades build. We have a lot of similarities. We're just kind of doing what an Umbral Blade Shadow Dagger build does. A little bit different, to be hipster, uh, it's basically just worse. And that is one of the things that makes me want to document this character instead of min-maxing perfect gear just to show you slightly more damage than I can already show you right now. The other thing that you can use as a pillar of rogues, I talked about two of them already. One was Falcon and one was Umbra Blades with parentheses Shatter Daggers. And the third one is something that we see a lot of Blade Dancers doing, Explosive Trap. Explosive Trap might be bugged. Explosive Trap right now has uh, access to Dust Shroud Generation, which basically caps your dodge and your glancing blow chance, as well as providing lots and lots of small hits and access to the Acid Flask skill tree as well, which it turns out if you can throw between 6 and 10 Acid Flasks per right click while also capping your uh, glancing blow chance and your evasion chance, you end up with a very strong character. So Explosive Trap, Falcon Damage, and like Umbral Blades with parentheses, Shadow Daggers tend to be the strongest things that you can be doing in all of the rogue um, starting class. So for this character here, the way that we are making use of Shadow Daggers, well, we have a ton of flat damage and we have a lot of melee crit multi on our Serpent's Fractal Tree. And we're throwing our three nets at a time. And as we do this, you'll see that we are also applying our Shadow Daggers. Mm, one of these is Shadow Daggers. You can see them pop across the top. Yeah, it's the one right there that keeps popping up and disappearing. So our Shutter Daggers are critting for, I don't know, some amount of damage. Looks like the high roll is like 220k. Something along those lines there. Dive Bomb would inflate that damage a little bit as well. But we are throwing three traps at a time. Each of our traps will proc Puncture. Each of our punctures will apply one Shatter Dagger. And remember, you need four Shatter Daggers for... Sorry, you need four stacks of Shatter Dagger, Shatter Dagger ailment for them to be consumed and then proc the Shatter Dagger hit. So because we only apply three on hit, every other toss, basically, will uh, will proc a Shatter Dagger. So it's, it's a little bit less than one per throw. But we are not only a Shatter Dagger build. And to emphasize that, we are trying to get as much melee critical strike chance as possible. I have a LP Serpent's Fractal Tree with tier 7 melee crit chance. And then my crit chance for melee is about 73. And then crit vulnerability means that we only need to get to about 80. And die bomb gives us a little bit of crit chance. So you'll see that my crit chance is basically capped for all intents and purposes. So uh, we are not only scaling our Shatter Daggers, but... Most Umbral Blades characters don't build any crit chance at all because they're only trying to scale the Shatter Dagger itself, which of course always crits. For our character, we're making use of the actual Puncture damage, and Puncture has a handful of more multipliers on it. So we have more damage down here, minus attack speed, but that doesn't affect us because we're proccing it off a trap. We have more multiplier off this. This is 7 times 5 is 35% more damage here. We have only 12% more damage here. We'll talk about this for a moment. And then this is 30% more damage. This is a quite strong multiplier. The other possibilities where you could take this instead is trimming some of these and instead going for maybe a mana-based character using the Mind Piercer node, stacking up some maximum mana, and having a tremendous amount of physical penetration off this. This would be an interesting place to take this. Uh, press the attack technically gives you a frenzy, even if you're proccing um, Puncture off of Net Trap, which is probably a bug probably an oversight that that hasn't been fixed 
but you know it's a thing that you can use right now if you don't have any other source of friends in your guild in your build so that's an interesting thing that you could do you could even trim nodes off of shadow daggers and instead just spec this and just like completely remove shadow daggers from your build so that's an interesting thing you could do speaking of puncture my build is a little bit low on damage as you've seen in the clips at the very beginning of this video uh this node here gives up to 32 percent more damage it's 8 32 yeah 32 percent more damage it's hit damage against immobilized enemies and uh, it's not a bug but it is annoying that we can't really make use of this node if we could have 32 percent more damage I think that this build would be much more reasonable. It's basically a meme right now. I don't really know why you play this particular uh, character that we are talking about right now. But if this node had more applicability, it would be much more interesting. So the only way that we can immobilize things is once uh, for one second, every 10 seconds off of this node here, Sealed Fate. Uh, we can use shurikens and shurikens can immobilize something for 0.5 seconds but you could proc this off of shift, but then you're not using these other skills. And then if you're shifting, you're like not using your skill. It's, it's a little bit strange. I guess you could self attack with them as well, but then you're self attacking and like weaving that in instead of just holding them right click. You understand the dilemma. And the third way that you can mobilize enemies is seemingly the most interesting because we're using net and we're procking puncture. It's like a match made in heaven for everything except for bosses and rare enemies who are not immobilized. What EHG could do if they wanted to make this a little bit more of a legitimate playstyle, um, because frankly, hit-based, crit-based puncture needs all the help that it can get. They could instead have bosses gain the immobilized tag, some kind of coding that they could do on the back end, so they wouldn't be technically, they, they wouldn't be actually immobilized. They could still move around, but they could have like the immobilized tag or like the immobilized debuff, so that puncture would still gain the damage off of this. So EHG. If you like the looks of this build, go make that change and all of a sudden this build will exist. Easy as that. <laughs> so that is kind of the rough rundown of this character. I was looking for as much damage as possible, so we ended up using some Doom stuff, which I think is a perfect uh, inclusion here. We are a lot of um, a lot of melee damage, both the melee puncture and the, and the shutter daggers are counting as melee. So Doom helps, and then more melee damage per stack of Doom. This belt is 20% more damage for us. And then instead of using something like Morning Frost, which gives us a lot of flat damage, well, we already have a lot of flat damage. So instead, we've gone for Suleron Step, and then Suleron Step gives us minus Fizz Res, but we counteract that with a little bit of Fizz Res from a Blessing. So instead of going for Percent Armor from our Blessing here, we just took our um, Fizz Res. So that gives us quite a bit there. My Res isn't great. Character's kind of a work in progress, but that's the idea, is to cap it off of this. So I think that about does it for like the interesting points of the character. We've talked about talked a little bit about spears. We talked about the uh, the pillars of what it means to be like a rogue character right now. Uh, in the clips at the very beginning of this, you saw like the damage is fine. I think the thing that I could do on this particular character to make it even better would be get a little bit more uh, percent increase damage. You'll note that I have 163 here. Let's uh let's get some like in damage or in game stuff. Uh, Let's use this thing, use this thing, blah, 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 blah. And like, that's about it, right? So 163% increased damage. And then we're physical damage, which is another like 96. And then our dexterity is giving us like another like 160. So our percent increased damage really is quite low. Um, it's like maybe 350, 360, something along those lines. We could have more. Having only 360-ish percent increased damage is quite low when it comes to percent increased damage. But in this places that we wanted to get percent increased damage, I wasn't able to get that. So you can get like, you can't get really percent increased damage, but you can get dexterity here if you wanted to. But I think this ends up not being a dexterity stacking character, even though most falconers, if you're scaling falcon damage, are scale, uh, scaling dexterity, particularly because of this and the other stuff that dexterity gives to you. You can get like double prefixes on a chess piece. You could try to get like a three OP Titan Heart or simply not use a Titan Heart. You could use things like plus levels to um, Sync Strike or plus levels to Shadow Cascade because we're not using those skills, but the hybrid mod on those gives you percent increased melee damage. And we really need percent increased melee damage on this character here. We're missing a percent increased damage on our helmet. We only have plus one to puncture instead of plus four to puncture. 
And I think what you'd ought to do is maybe get like two LP on your Suleron step, getting like hybrid health and movement speed. And then of course, movement speed also gives you more percent increased damage off of this node. So I'm only level 91 right now, but 92, 97, level 97 would let me fill out this and then get like another 150% increased damage off of damage scaling per movement speed. So there's certainly more percent increased damage that I could get on this character, and it could get us up to maybe 700 or 800% increased damage, which would be much better, but is that going to make this into a S tier build, or is that just going to slightly increase our damage? Even if it doubles our damage, which uh, it shouldn't, but it's going to give us a bit more damage, the hoops that we're jumping through in order to get that much damage and the amount of effort that we're doing to like balance our offenses and our defenses and get our mana cost low enough and like get some crit chance and landing like tier seven modifiers and our serpent's fractal tree like we're, we're jumping through a lot of hoops to get to the point of having like appropriate end game damage relative to things like explosive trap proccing acid flask things like just scaling falcon damage instead of like, neglecting our falcon damage or just using Umbral Blades instead, because Umbral Blades basically does what we do here, but better. Yeah, this is like solidly B tier, high C tier stuff. It's the kind of build that if you were only playing the strongest builds, if you were approaching this game by only being like a tryhard who wants to play the best builds, instead of playing funky, cool hipster builds, you would never consider playing this character. Hopefully that changes in the future, because it is quite enjoyable. I, I do like the idea of this character quite a lot. Um, let's run down the character real quick. I've already told you about all the sweet points, but I'll show you what we uh, attempted here, and then you can try to make it better. Maybe, if you want to. So let's start with Puncture. We have all of our percent increased damage nodes. We talked about the possibility of going mana based instead over here with Mind Piercer, but this is basically what our Puncture tree is looking like. Next up is the Net tree. For Net, we have uh, two tier seven modifiers. So we have minus 10 throwing mana cost, and of course, our um, our net still costs six mana off of that. The rest of net is some generic looking attack speed, more multiplier stuff up here, and then rounding out uh, just like some nonsense over here as well. In aerial assault, uh, aerial assault, we're proccing umbral blades. Uh, these will apply shadow daggers. The reason that we've grabbed these nodes up here instead of grabbing some extra defense down here, which we could certainly do, is that if we aerial assault onto something and then throw our net traps, we've applied at least one Shadow Dagger off of these nodes here. And then our net traps will fill in the rest of them, which means we'll get a Shadow Dagger proc immediately, which gives us some nice clear speed. So I think these are worthwhile if you're just looking for a zoomy playstyle. If you only care about bossing, then you certainly would not be using these because they don't do anything. Uh, we have some cooldown stuff. We have some frenzy stuff. Uh, that's basically the rest of it for here. For Dive Bomb, Dive Bomb has a ton of utility baked into it. Even though we're not using it for damage at all, it still happens to deal damage because Falcon's kind of busted. We have the minus mana cost is set at equal to zero. We have a tiny bit of mana on hit. Um, you could flex this over to Featherfall, or you could flex more points into this, um, depending on what your mana situation is. But Featherfall, along with Dive Bomb, is giving us this increased critical strike chance, it's crit multi, some extra movement speed over here, which of course gives us percent increased damage based on movement speed from the mastery, if you pick that up. And then these nodes, crit vulnerability, and our Fizz Res stuff here. So we have a tiny bit of Fizz Res Shred built into Puncture itself. Along with this, basically caps our Fizz Shred, so we don't need any other source of that. For a Crit Vulnerability, we have three stacks here. I think it's worth keeping those. This is lasting for four seconds, and this is a 4.7 second cooldown. So it's basically three stacks all the time. The rest of our Crit Vulnerability to make up for a 73 Critical Strike Chance comes in from one idol that we have up here. It's a little strange looking, but this goes up to 75% chance to apply crit vulnerability on hit with caltrops. And noteworthy that with nets, we throw caltrops right here. And when we throw, they kind of spread out, which of course is not what you want. But if you throw them right on top of your character, all the nets in a circle fall on top of each other, which is exactly what you want for a single target. Of course, every time that you throw, you're also throwing caltrops. So on right click, you just have a 52 whatever 75 percent chance of applying crit vulnerability so it's very easy to stack up crit vulnerability when you're melee range on top of a boss for example talked about nets uh we talked about dive bomb and what this is offering for us here falcon is giving us just a tiny bit of utility it gives us a kill threshold at 16 percent, which is the only kill threshold in build tiny bit of utility tiny bit of utility tiny bit of damage and uh, a little bit of the falconer stuff here as well movement speed attack speed excellent 
For our gear, uh, we were looking for uh, sources of increased critical strike chance. I figured that you need about 250-ish percent increased critical strike chance because we have 22 flats. So uh, 100 puts you at 44, 200 puts you at 66, and then like 250 or so puts you at like 70-ish. So we've got like 73 critical strike chance. We have 42. Let's see, is my math right? 100, 170... 220 like 210 220 ish yeah so you're looking for about 200 is like 250 percent increased critical strike chance and that will well, make things crit all the time which is excellent the other things that you're looking for in terms of your gear are of course the minus amount of cost on your rings we want some extra um some crit multi if you can get the crit multi <sighs> yeah I don't know. I, I I think I think the right place for the percent increased damage is on the helmet and on the body armor. The last thing to talk about for the idols, because we already mentioned this, is rogue idols. Obviously, why would they support two-handed melee spear stuff? They basically don't. So <laughs> all of our idols are health, 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 fizz res, health, 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 health. There's not much else to do. So this is all of your health here. You'll note that I have 3.3k health, which is quite chunky. If you took off the Titan Heart, you'll see that I go to 2.3k health, which is like a little bit low. But this is just a Titan Heart with tier 7% health on it. So that is, well, that is it's roughly a thousand life. Oh man, it's like an OG comms heart. Whew, it's so good. But that's the uh, that's the kind of health differential. You could probably do without a Titan Heart if you wanted to do something like do for uh, like more percent increased damage prefixes. But realistically, you're using a two-hander, you use a Titan Heart. It's just a good thing to do. For blessings, so you can see what I've chosen to do here, uh, I went for Void Res. I went for Lightning Res, Crit Avoidance, which uh, along with the Mastery gives you the capped Crit Avoidance and it scales your minion as well, in case you care about that. And then we have uh, some Flat Armor along with Physical Resistance here. So lots of resistances coming in from our... Uh, from our blessings. I skipped over the mastery. Uh, let me show you briefly what's going on here. I talked about rounding out these points, like 115, as I think what I would do for these points, getting us to level 97. A lot of dexterity, some throwing, glancing blows, and this, because this happens to work with Dive Bomb. In Blade Dancer, we have our Cloak of Shadows. For a normal Shadow Dagger character, you would definitely be taking this node, because it's crazy strong for a normal character. But because we have so much flat damage already, I've opted against this. For Falconer, we have basically everything that's defensive because I like having my defenses and I still kind of think that Falconer is one of the least interesting mastery trees in the entire game. I, it's, it's so boring. I actually took these notes out, uh, the stuff that gives you increased puncture range here. Kind of the reason for the build, uh, they technically give you range and it's worthwhile, I suppose. But if you take these out, your clear speed is still kind of the same because we're throwing three of these, they're frocking all the time. Um, these don't really make much of a difference for my particular character. So really what these are giving me is percent increased damage. If I didn't need percent increased damage, I would simply take these out and I would take different nodes instead. Throwing attack speed, our coordinated fade, this procs because I am basically numb locking my dive bomb. It's a 4.7 second cooldown. So every like two or three of these is going to give me three silver shrouds. So that's a nice thing to have there because instant cast off of the intuitive connection. We have more damage per stack of slow on the enemy. We have some crit chance, crit multi, and some life gain on crit with crit avoidance from finesse them. We have the reason uh, for stacking dexterity here. Dexterity gives us percent increased damage. It gives us armor. Oh my god, it's so good. I love this node. I love saying the name for it too. Stymphalian Feathers. Whew, what a node. And then rounding it out is six points in Tailwind just for some um, extra defenses, some dodge ratings, some movement speed. Remember, movement speed should be percent increased damage off of agility as well. So that about does it for the character. Kind of interesting stuff to talk about. It's been fun to gear this character. It's been fun to play this character. But it's really the kind of thing that you're only really going to enjoy if you can rem like if you can somehow forget that Umbral Blades exists. Because Umbral Blades are busted. Shatter Daggers are busted, even though they've been nerfed. We're going to go explore other Falcon Falconer builds instead and see if we can find other things to do with our time here. I'm technically interested in playing falconers that don't rely on falcon damage because the falcon damage is through the roof and it seems hard to make a bad falcon build so i'm going to try my dam damnedest to make a bad falcon build we're going to do some weird stuff with the falconer see if we can scale some weird damage types and uh, find out what can you do with falcon and still make it feel kind of op because falcon is kind of op
thanks for being here. I enjoy making uh, diary posts about builds like this, even though they ended up not being top tier, because I think that you can learn just as much, if not more, from a quote unquote failed experiment as you can from a successful experiment. So thanks for being here. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time.